Today, we speak to the leader of an organization that has received more than $250 million voluntarily from the nation's leading distillers to fight drunk driving and underage drinking and promote responsible decisions about beverage alcohol. Stay tuned as we learn about their dedication to advocacy. Participate, engage, speak out, use your voice to be an effective advocate. The Voices in Advocacy podcast examines the diverse landscape of advocacy, exploring the ins and outs of building influence, driving change, and creating champion advocates. It's now time for the Voices in Advocacy podcast with your host, Roger Rickard. Welcome to the Voices in Advocacy podcast, and I hope you're enjoying season five. I'm Roger Rickard, president and founder of Voices in Advocacy, where we work with organizations to inspire, educate, engage, and activate your supporters by turning them into effective, influential advocates. And this is the podcast dedicated to the art of advocacy. It is for people that work and engage in advocacy efforts for their organizations, be they corporations, associations, trade organizations, and nonprofit cause groups. Now, let's get started. On today's show, we speak with Chris Swanger, the president and CEO of both the Distilled Spirits Council of the United States and Responsibility.org. Now, Chris has over 25 years of experience in the public and private sector. And with the Distilled Spirits Council of the United States, is the leading voice for distilled spirits in the U.S. market and serves as the industry's advocate in state capitals, the nation's capital, and foreign capitals around the globe. Chris focuses on breaking down the traditional barriers that exist between corporations, NGOs, those non-government organizations, and activist groups by facilitating consensus-based outcomes which are deliverable, actionable, and measurable. He is a native Texan with a degree from Lubbock and Texas Tech University and lives in McLean, Virginia with his wife and two sons. And finally, I have something in common with Chris, and that is our favorite adult beverage, Bourbon on the Rocks. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to welcome Chris Swanger to today's show. Chris, hello and welcome. Hi, Roger. Thank you for having me. And it's a privilege to be with you. And thank you for your leadership on advocacy and spreading the word on the important role any sector, any industry uh, needs to do to make sure their voices are heard with policymakers around the United States and state capitals and around the world, actually. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much for your kind words. But let's talk about you. Let's talk about, uh, tell, tell our listeners, You serve as the president and CEO of the Distilled Spirits Council of the United States. So specifically, what is your mission with the organization? Great. Uh, Well, listen, it is a privilege for me to to serve in this leadership role on behalf of the distilled spirits industry. And I have two primary responsibilities. First, as you mentioned, is to make sure and uh, it's easy Uh, that our industry is really on the front foot of advocating responsibility as it relates uh, to those who choose to enjoy beverage alcohol, obviously those over the legal drinking age. But my other role is to be uh, an advocate, an advocate for our great industry that contributes mightily in jobs, the hospitality industry around the country, tourism, and uh, raising money for the federal government because it's a big revenue stream, beverage alcohol excise taxes. Uh, So my my job is twofold, uh, to be an advocate for the industry's commitment to responsibility and push forward on legislation to ensure uh, that we eliminate drunk driving and eliminate underage drinking and promote responsibility, but at the same time, be a, a, a vivacious advocate for this great industry and what it brings. Distilled Spirits has played an integral role in the history of this great country, starting with George Washington and beyond, 
And uh, there's a lot of pride and a lot of heritage. And I had the privilege to have a have a role in that. Yeah, I was I was going to bring up the fact that uh, good old George, I think he was a whiskey dis distiller, if I'm not uh, not mistaken. But you also brought up with something I think is really important that general public has to get their arms around with organizations like yours. You support the communities in which your uh, members uh, have their businesses in. You support jobs. You mentioned hospitality and tourism uh, and support for the local farmers as well. 100%. Yeah. So you help create this circle, uh, if you will, uh, That's that really helps support these communities and move them forward. Now, I know you have pressing issues. Every organization does. What are two or three uh, maybe the most important issues that are facing uh, distillers today? Uh, many, many. I mean, beverage alcohol is reg regulated uh, by the states, obviously. Uh, so that's number one. Let me just do a call out. It also has a big impact on bars, restaurants, taverns, package stores, and, and they play a vital role in the economy as well in the hospitality industry, including the many, many distilleries around the country now. So look, we have international trade issues like tariffs uh, that we're uh, worried about. Uh, there have been recent events where there's been tariffs imposed on American whiskey related to trade disputes between the United States and uh, the EU, the European Union. Uh, we always have battles to prevent tax increases. Uh, the federal and state taxes on distilled spirits are extraordinarily high uh, to the point of being punitive for consumers. Uh, and sometimes governments have a tendency to look for an easy, easy way to raise, raise money. And uh, so we battle that out. And also, uh, to advocate to modernize the marketplace for distilled spirits. We want to make sure that consumers, responsible consumers, can access these great products that are in the marketplace coming from distilleries really all around the world uh, just as easily as they can enjoy a great wine product or a great beer as well. But all of it has to be guided by our commitment to responsibility and education in showcasing the best of the industry with our farmers and all of the above. You know, it's always interesting that uh, an easy way for elected officials to raise money and not call it uh, raising taxes is to impose new taxes on different uh, products and services that are out there rather than saying it's going to be a direct tax on uh on everybody, it's it's a usage tax that they yeah, it used to be called a sin tax way back in yep, the day. Absolutely, it's really yeah. a tax on hospitality, and it's a tax on jobs, and it's a, a tax on conviviality, people getting together with friends and family, and uh, having a great dinner and having a cocktail, uh, and. The taxes on distilled spirits really are at the point of diminishing returns. So we're big advocates of, of advocating against tax increases. Yeah. Uh, and it's important. It's, it's important for the vibrancy of the American economy. Yeah, it, 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 it almost should be that they have to, uh, and maybe you disagree with this, but let me throw it out there. It's almost like I think that there should be a warning on the price, you know, that there's a tax of X, Y, and Z. I mean, when you, you know, when you look at, let's say, gasoline taxes, yep. you know, in some states, it's 60 cents a gallon uh, of, of gas. And, you know, and people scream and yell about inflation and everything else. And they got to look at the amount of taxes that are coming out of something like that. I would imagine it would, uh, it would shock people if they knew the amount of tax that's paid let's say on a on a bottle of whiskey or vodka well over 50 percent of the price yep. of a bottle of american whiskey homegrown here is state local federal taxes we generate 7.5 billion in federal taxes uh to the federal coffers and those tax increases have a trickle effect to the farmer to the consumer obviously to the restaurant over to the tavern owner to the distributor and all of the above 
So it's important that we advocate and in, in spread the word on the impact of punitive tax rates. Boy, couldn't couldn't agree more with that. So you recently, I think it was last month, if I'm not mistaken, held your a legislative fly-in <laughs> with a unique twist at the end of the day. So tell us uh, about the fly-in and uh, kind of the uniqueness at the end. Well, we had uh, we had a, a great fly-in where uh, distillers from around the con con uh, country came in uh, to meet with. Uh, their members of Congress, really to talk about their personal plights of building, sustaining small businesses, precious, be beautiful distilleries in communities all around the world. A sidebar, about 20 years ago, there were maybe 60 distilleries in the United States. Today, there's over 2,600 distilleries. <clears throat> small, beautiful distilleries popping up. Mom and, and dad, small businesses creating wonderful stories and bringing great product to the marketplace. So our fly-in, our advocates flew in and met with their members of Congress to help them understand the role of their distillery and the role of this great industry uh, plays in contributing to the vibrancy of the American economy and help educate them on issues that matter for our industry. And then at the end of the day, didn't you have them come over to your building? We did. We had a great event. We had a great event. Discus has turned 50 years, and we had a great event at our new office space. Please come visit, uh, really at the foot of Capitol Hill. And we had members of Congress really learning about the industry, partaking, those who wanted to partake and have a nip and have a try of a cocktail. Uh, we had a great mixologist hosting and it was just just a great, uh, enriched time uh, to showcase the best of our industry and, and our commitments to the American economy, job creation, and of course, responsibility as well. I, I wish people could see my face because I'm smiling because at the end of the day, you, you had your cocktail cactus, uh, caucus bar open. That's it. And when you had those mixologists come in, they created specialty drinks, and I love the name of one of them. It was called the Spirited Advocate. Absolutely. And if you'd like, Roger, I can talk about that. In addition to that, uh, we had a great mocktail, too. Look, uh, this industry recognizes uh, and, and promotes responsibility, and part of that is uh, ensuring that uh, you don't have to drink alcohol. It's for those who choose to enjoy it and for those who not. And there are great mocktails in the marketplace as well. Uh, but we are the Distilled Spirits Council. And look, the advocacy game, and you know this very, very well, is to win share of mine. Policymakers around the country have to navigate thousands and thousands of issues uh, within their respective districts and so forth. So it doesn't matter what industry you're in, but you've got to advocate for share of mine. And obviously, many of our great member companies advocate for share stomach, too, because everybody wants to try that special distilled spirits product. But one of the ways that we do that is uh, about three years ago, we launched a platform called Spirit United, and it's our grassroots platform. And we've got over 60 plus thousand people that can get engaged. So when we work on a policy issue, whether on a state level, international level, or local level or uh, federal level, uh, we call out to those a part of Spirit United. Now, of course, I'm going to say www.spiritunited.org, and you will hear about uh, how awesome this industry is. Check it out, sign up. And when we need to advocate, it's not only our staple of lobby lobbyists. Uh, we were privileged to have advocates in the lobbying community, but uh, lawmakers need to he hear from their constituents and the voice of the industry needs to be heard. And our grassroots platform, Spirit United, is a way to do that. Yeah, I, I was looking at that and I, I, I had that down as something I was going to ask you later on. In that, But I'm glad you really brought it up because it's not just the people that maybe economically uh, are di directly impacted by this but it's consumers that have the right 
the dealer, all that. the distributors, all that. the retail, anybody that that has any kind of an interest in uh, in distilled spirits can be a part of the uh, Spirits United. Millions of great connoisseurs of distilled spirits consumers, and uh, we need them to be advocates. Look, advocacy is a team sport, and part of the trick is to get focus and galvanize everybody that has an invested interest to make sure that their voice is heard uh, with policymakers. Perfect. So with that, let's roll over a little bit because I am very intrigued. Uh, and I think the audience will be, uh, you as the leader of responsibility.org, uh, it's got a great core mission. I think that there are three main kind of pillars of that core mission. What are those? Responsibility.org has been around since uh, 1991, so 31 years of age. And it was really a commitment by the industry uh, to really uh, play a leading role to eliminate underage drinking, number one, eliminate drunk and impaired driving, number two. And then for those who choose to drink alcohol, to understand what their obligation should be and certainly enjoying the product and savoring the product, but do so responsibly. Look, alcohol's a part of our nation's communities and it has been for quite some time that uh, the America has gone through a dreaded experiment with prohibition and so forth. Uh, but we've all lived life and have had circumstances where a brother or sister, mom and dad or an uncle, or a friend uh, overserves himself. And, you know, tragically bad things happen when alcohol is abused. So this is a community effort. Uh, part of the magic of responsibility.org uh, is that it is funded by the nation's leading distillers, but uh, it is truly committed. And part of the magic of that is partnering with very credible third party uh, actors. That can be uh, great American groups like it's sad, Mothers Against Drunk Driving. Right. That they are a victims-based organization. And sadly, members of MAD uh, are victims of drunk driving fatalities. It's the most preventable crime that we know. And we've got to do everything we can to prevent drunk driving fatalities and crashes and uh, keep those uh, that do drunk driving off our nation's roads. So we work with third parties, uh, many, whether it's schools, education platforms, on, on our efforts to prevent underage drinking, or the traffic safety community uh, to prevent drunk driving and pass legislation to make sure uh, that uh, government is doing the right thing to promote responsible consumption of alcohol and prevent abuse. Well, I, and I love the I love the word responsibility as part of responsibility.org because we're really what you are. It's, it's corporate social responsibility. It's not only the distillers uh, and particularly the 2600 that are here, but it's some of the biggest brands that are in the entire industry that are all contributing to this. And that makes it an incredibly powerful form of advocacy. Fully committed, fully, fully, fully committed. And look, responsibility, it doesn't matter what industry you're in, but the more progress we make in preventing underage drinking, preventing drunk driving, saving lives, promoting responsibility, that enables this industry to be long-term and sustainable and profitable. It's part of it. And the two can go hand in hand in our complementary. So it is, I'm proud to say, it is really part of the DNA of the industry. You know, we've all lived and, you know, had experiences and have learned. And uh, the more progress we can make in those areas will ensure that this industry is sustainable. It, it, the same applies to, you know, commitment to uh, sustainability as it relates to the environment, right? So uh, we are fully committed and again, that's a team effort, right? You got to practice what you preach. You got to lead by example, and you got to partner with 
uh, different advocates and different third party stakeholders to make progress in those important areas. And and you talked about tying it together with MAD as well as SAD. Uh, that so, how does the storytelling fit into this advocacy work? Storytelling is critical because you need to share why a particular policy is going to have a direct impact on the livelihood of an individual. And that comes with stories. Look, George Washington, our nation's first president, uh, was a distiller. There is an awesome story behind that. For the 2,600 distilleries in the United States, there is an awesome story. For a policy issue that is critical to the industry, there's a story behind that that has an impact on lives, an impact on jobs in this industry. So storytelling is a critical component to that. There's a storytelling moment as it relates to responsibility as well. So that brings these policy issues to life and it helps resonate with policymakers that are advocating, uh, navigating a lot. So with that, that makes me think a little bit about the future. And what do you think are gonna be the biggest challenges facing your industry let's say five or 10 years down the road? Well, obviously we continue to need to, need to make uh, uh, progress on underage, eliminating underage drinking. We've seen an uptick in drunk driving, sadly, over the last couple of years, which is alarming. So we're tripling down on that commitment, uh, making sure, look, uh, we've our industry has had great success. Consumers are gravitating to distilled spirits and cocktails and it's a very, very exciting time because our member companies are bringing great innovation, storytelling products and great products to the marketplace that consumers are gravitating to. Uh, so we've had a lot of growth. Uh, certainly there are a thousand and one challenges in the policy arena that we got to keep advocating for. But we always need to be guided by our commitment to responsibility, making sure that uh, consumers make smart choices and at the end of the day, make sure that the Distilled Spirits Council and Responsibility.org both are winning the day and share a mind with our consumers and policymakers. Why it's important for our consumers is because we want our consumers to embrace all the commitments to responsibility, obviously, but we also want them to be advocates for our industry. So, Chris, why why do you think there's been an uptick in some of the drunk driving? Do you think that it is related to uh, the pandemic? Uh, is it related to uh, better enforcement? Or where, where, where would you go with that? It's complex, but certainly the pandemic, people are driving much faster on the highways uh, which was alarming because if you remember the early days, you could zoom down a highway because there was no traffic, right? Uh, 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 it, impact on law enforcement, uh, you know, we've seen and heard uh, that there's limited resources by law enforcement. Uh, we're big advocates of ignition interlocks for first time offenders. You know, if you you make a mistake, uh, we certainly believe you should have an ignition interlock on your car for for a time being. Uh, so, uh, look, uh, impaired driving, the mix of alcohol and drugs as cannabis gets legalized in the states, uh, people will do both, and that is a bad uh, uh, recipe. And look, innocent lives are impacted, including the lives of someone who makes a really, really horrible, horrible choice. So we've got to double down. We've got to look after each other, right? Your judgment is impaired when you have a couple of cocktails, if you're not careful, right? And uh, we got to look after each other and make sure that people are making good decisions and be good brothers and sisters and friends and make sure that an individual get home, gets home. Look, with technology and uh, uh, Uber and Lyft and all of the above, there is no reason that drunk driving still exists today, but time and time again, you'll hear, hear stories in a, in a small town of something terrible happening, and we all have to double down to prevent that. I, I, I 
totally agree with everything that you said there. Uh, do you have to recruit your members to be advocates? We, the more the merrier. So please, those in the distilled spirits industry, check out Spirits United, www.spiritsunited.org. But those in the industry, uh, we've got a great partnership membership program. We've got a great membership program. And we try to deliver a lot of value back to our membership in all forms. And uh, please uh, check out the Distilled Spirits Council of the United States and responsibility.org. Uh, the more, the merrier. Advocacy is a team effort, and we need all the help that we can get. I love the way that you're you're selling it. I absolutely agree with it, and that's what you got to do. You got to throw it out there, and you got to keep repeating it for people. Uh, <clears throat> how do you prepare that advocacy network for success? Keep them informed. Keep them engaged. Keep them enriched, enriched about what's awesome about this industry and the jobs that it provides, and uh, just fascinated. And what's fun about representing the distilled spirits industry is there are awesome heritage, history, stories to tell, and of course, great products, whether it's vodka, tequila, scotch whiskey, Irish whiskey, cognac rum, you name it. And of course, American whiskey, Tennessee whiskey and bourbon. Uh, there are uh, stories in communities, not only in every community in the United States about the, these great products, but also around the world, obviously. I can I can absolutely see the passion that, that you uh, you bring to your job and, and supporting your people uh, in this. What is the first word that comes to mind when you think of the word advocacy? Team, 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 T E A M. It's like having it being on a Roger, you're you're you you've got a baseball history, right? It's a team effort. Uh, I paused for a second because I was like, it's a team sport, teamwork, uh, but a team. A at the end of the day, it takes takes a community. And uh, that's why it's so critical. Part of discuses and responsibility.org's uh, uh, responsibilities to inspire a team, an army, a community to be advocates for the, the, the betterment of this industry. Uh, to defend and protect it as well. 100%. Yeah. Just a couple of quick questions for you here as we close this out. What are the biggest rewards in your job? I think, look, I am privileged. I have a great team at discusandresponsibility.org. So, and uh, certainly uh, in our efforts on responsibility, that is leaving a mark uh, for the betterment in communities around the country. Uh, it is a real privilege. And I lead with that, even though I'm the leading advocate for the industry, you can do both. Uh, so that inspires me every day. And then the great distillers and the jobs and uh, the happiness that we spread around communities. Conviviality is a great word. It's bringing people together. And, you know, in this world of political divide that we live in, uh, we, you know, there's Republican Party, there's Democrats, there's conservatives and progressives and liberals and environmentalists. We're the cocktail party and we want everybody to come together it doesn't matter what your political leanings are and get together and have a cocktail and uh, build bridges uh, in communities around the country and state capitals around the country on Capitol Hill. I, I love the cocktail party. I, I must share with you when I was in college, uh, being a political junkie, I had a T-shirt that said, I support the two party system, one on Friday and one on Saturday. Uh, so, I love that. Cocktail party. A cocktail parties. Absolutely. What's the best professional tip you've ever received in your career? Be true to yourself. Uh, put your values, live your values, uh, and just be in a position to contribute back, right? If you just do your level best with a lot of passion and obviously uh, uh, with a right balance of values and commitment to the organization, whatever organization uh, you work for, 
good things will happen to you professionally, ambitious wise, and all of the above. So be true to yourself and your values and contribute back and good things will come in return. Anything you want to add? Just everybody, thank you. Uh, and thank you, Roger, uh, for what you do, uh, spreading the word on advocacy. It's really, really critical. And it doesn't matter what industry you're in, uh, uh, spread the word and have a voice. And uh, this industry is a great industry that contributes mildly to, to the betterment of the nation. And uh, obviously, what I do is advocate. Check out Spirit United and uh, 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 just... Uh, recognize that this industry has a lot to contribute and is com committed and uh, uh, we advocate and that's critical. And, and I also suggest you go to responsibility.org and see the great work that they do, the great resources that they have available and, and how uh, they're, they're working on their three core missions to help eliminate under underage drinking, eliminate uh, drunk and impaired driving and uh, and make sure us adults are responsible in our action when it when it comes to uh, dealing with alcohol and and drugs uh, that's that's a wrap up today's fantastic conversation with Chris Swanger president and CEO of the Distilled Spirits Council of the United States as well as responsibility.org thank you Chris for being on the show today and all the best in your advocacy efforts. Thank you, Roger. Good fun. Thank you. Let's face it. Today's advocacy arena is just plain noisy. Organizations are stretched. You need every advantage to make sure your issue gets the attention it deserves and your voice heard. The RAP Index is the best way to do just that by finding your stakeholders' relationships and engagement power. Get past the noise. Know who your people know. Go to rapindex.com. That's R-A-P-Index.com. And tell them Roger sent you for a special offer. If you like today's podcast, head over to where you find your podcast and subscribe to the Voices and Advocacy podcast. A big Thank you to today's guest. I appreciate your time and the unwavering passion for advocacy you have. Well, that's it for this episode of Voices in Advocacy. Remember, you have the power to be an effective, influential advocate. Now go out and make it a better world. We hope you enjoyed today's Voices and Advocacy podcast and look forward to you joining us again next week. To learn more about Voices and Advocacy, go to our website, voicesinadvocacy.com.